Welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> I need to get my stuff out. One second. This one's for you, Parker. Just an FYI, I really like Spider-Man. Um, and I can't stop thinking about him. Because he's really awesome. That's, that's just what I like. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause for Spider-Man real quick. Okay, now we need to get serious. But I do like Spider-Man. I think one of my favorite things about Spider-Man is like, I don't know, how about his powers or his costume? I mean, what other superhero can totally rock a skin-tight red and blue spider suit? I think he's, I, that's actually valid though. Um, but yeah, I think he's really cool. I think the main thing that I like the most about Spider-Man is his backstory. I think it's just really powerful, and, and I like that about Spider-Man. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys the backstory. I think that will help us out. So, sp here's the story. Spider-Man, or Peter Parker, is a normal kid who goes to high school in Queens. I think it's like an engineering high school or something. I don't know, that doesn't matter. Biology high school, thank you. And he is kind of a nerd, which kind of sucks. And also is both, yes. No discrimination against nerds. Okay, but um, yeah, he was like a nerd and that sucked. And also his parents are dead. So he's raised by his aunt and uncle, which is super cool. Now, one time, Peter Parker was sitting in a lab and he decided to get bit by a spider. It was not, he, he had a terrible night. He was, had a fever, all the bad stuff from getting bit by a spider. That's just what happens if you get bit by spiders, especially radioactive ones. So he got bit by a spider and the day after, with this like fever thing. The day after he got bit by a spider, his uncle was shot and killed. He was not, that's a spoiler, just an FYI. Oh, really? If you didn't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, he was really, really mad that someone killed his uncle. So the first thing he thought of to do with his powers is go and get revenge for his uncle. The dude who killed his uncle, he wants to get revenge from them. So. He did that, and he ended up getting revenge. I can't remember what revenge. It's been a sec since I watched the movie, so. But yeah, he got revenge. Yeah, so he, didn't, he wasn't really satisfied in that, so he decided to go and save people and found his true love is kind of saving people and saving New York. That's his favorite thing to do is saving New York. He realizes that, yeah, there's more value in saving people and giving his time away and risking his life than being selfish and, yeah, like trying to get, like, what's the word? Revenge, whoever said that. So that's super cool. Now, I spent a lot of time thinking about this story and I think spent a lot of time thinking about how cool it is and how I kind of wish I was Spider-Man, and that I could be super generous like this guy. And then I'm like, oh, that's when it stops. I'm not actually Spider-Man. I'm not super cool and generous like him. What stops me from doing this generosity thing like Spider-Man? And I think about this a lot, and this is a huge block in a lot of people is this like generosity, why it's so hard, what it comes from. So I'm going to teach you guys tonight about why it's so hard to be generous and then how to fix that. 
So some of you might already know why it's hard to be generous, but I'm just going to give an example. So this is tricky because we just are selfish, unfortunately. Now, like, running it through my mind, it's hard to be generous with the blessings that I've worked hard to get. It's hard to be generous, like, letting that one kid get the last chocolate milk. That was just the one that I thought of. And it's, it's, a, it's awful. It's terrible. Chocolate milk is needed. So, yes. Okay. Don't get sidetracked, but just a quick round of applause for chocolate milk. Okay, stop. We want to stay focused. So, yes. Like, this thing that stops us from being generous is, like, letting the person we're being generous to have more power and more stuff than us. It's letting the person we're being generous to get the front seat, get the better thing than us. That's kind of what generosity is, and that's kind of what at least stops me from being generous. Now, yeah, that's super tricky. So now, to try to fix this, this is the fixing segment of my message, is let's read the Bible. Because the Bible teaches us a lot of things. So, let's all read Luke twelve thirteen. Is it up there? I don't know. The Gospel of Luke. Where's my Bible? I like this chair. Okay. I want to stand up. You guys don't need to stand, but I want to stand up. Luke twelve thirteen says, you know, all of us stand up. We need to focus on this and give God the respect of standing up while we read his word because that's super helpful. Luke twelve thirteen says, someone from the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Okay, we can sit down now. I've always wanted to do that. Um, so yeah, basically what this verse says is, like, this dude doesn't really want to be generous, generous with his brother. He doesn't want to let his brother get the upper hand and get the better thing than him. And then, I'm not going to read this next part, I'm not going to make us read it, but pretty much Jesus is like, dude, be generous with him, please, because it's super important. And then... He tells them a story that he made up called a parable, which Jesus likes his parables. So now let's all stand up again and read the parable that Jesus says. It's only three verses long. It's verse 16 through 19. Then he told a parable. A rich man's land was very productive. He thought to himself, what should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? I will do this, he said. I'll tear down the barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and goods in there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many stores uh, up for many years. Take it easy and drink and enjoy yourself. Okay, we can sit down now. So basically what this parable says is this dude is selfish. And he kind of like, he yeah, it's kind of bad. And then the next verse, which I don't have written down. I don't think it's in a slide. But it says, God said to him, you fool. You see, this guy doesn't really get it. And we all know that not being generous is probably not the best idea. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you that and how, uh, like tell you how to be generous and how to get past this roadblock of not being generous. Okay? So that's, that's what I'm saying. Now this, this roadblock, ooh, let's see, next page. Um, we, this guy who has a sweet farm and has all the crops sees this value that he thinks is real in his own wealth and his own prosperity and doesn't see the value in letting other people share this wealth and prosperity. I just... Like, he doesn't see how powerful it is to let other people 
be prosperous, just like Spider-Man. Spider-Man wanted his powers and to use his powers for, to him, for himself and get revenge on his uncle's killer. He didn't like really want to let other people have a part of his powers and his wealth and prosperity. He just wanted to use it for himself, you know, get revenge instead of saving other people. So, is that it? Do we just need to find the value of being generous? Is that what breaks a roadblock? Kinda. Actually, yes. We need to understand that the value of generosity is so much more than the value of being selfish. Write that down. If you have a pen, write it on your hand. I don't know. The value of being generous is so much more than being selfish. This is what at least stops me. I try to see the value, this fake value, in being selfish and not this way bigger value that sometimes is hard to see in being generous. So that's my main point, and now you don't need to listen anymore. Just kidding, just kidding. I have a couple more things to say because I think you guys need to hear it. And yeah, so these things, I'm sorry, I need to get better at transitions. Uh, I need it. There we go. I have it written down. I just took it out of my notebook. Okay. Tips to go away from here and to be generous. Now you already know one tip, that's finding the value in generosity. Now our next tip is mindset. We need to realize that, yeah, we need to start with this mindset of generosity is so valuable, more valuable than the things that we're keeping to ourselves and this selfishness. Is that what it says? Yeah, kind of. Um, the next one is look for ways to help people. Now, look, now we already, you know, in generosity know that, like, money's a good one and time, but that actually doesn't need to be the only two things we can be generous with. I don't know that the perfect generous thing is for any of you guys, but if you just look in your life and find needs around you and how you can apply them, this is what we need to do next. Look for ways to help. Okay, our third tip, well my third tip, and God's third tip. Um, do the things that you've thought of. It seems like a pretty straightforward step, but it kinda is one of the hardest ones. You need to execute this this thing that we found, these ways we can be generous with, and we need to execute it and help people and by being generous with the things that we found and the needs that we found around us. Okay, my fourth tip, encourage people. While you're being generous to them, encourage them. Now there's a flip side of this encouragement. While other people are being generous, Encourage them to be generous, because that is important. We want everyone to be generous. We want to make the people in this room, like, tell all the people they know to be generous and all the people they know to be generous so that everyone will be generous. So that's what I want to happen. Okay, that's, that's all the things I've written down. But I think that we should pray because prayer is good. So let's all bow our heads and close our eyes and pray. Dear God, help us to see the value in generosity. Help us to look away from this fake value that we've made of this, of uh, selfishness, and look to this beautiful value you have for us of generosity. God, help all these people in this room 
to have generous hearts. God, we know that the power to be generous comes from you. God, please give the people in this room generosity. Amen.